Welcome and namaste. My name is Dina Jensen and this is the series Yoga 101 The Basics where I take you through some of the things that you are very likely to encounter in the yoga room and I just break it down and make it accessible so that when you take a group yoga class or you're doing a home practice you can feel really empowered. So today I'd like to show you a variation of the sun salutation. And this is a very common flow that you'll find in modern yoga that takes you up and down from the floor to standing. And it takes you um, from the front of the mat to the back of the mat. And there are, are so many different variations to the sun salutation. Some lineages and some traditions have them labeled um, sun salute A, B, and C, but there just are so many variations. I'm not going to label this. This is a variation to the sun salutation where you move your body and you feel your breath. When you first start the sun salutation, the breath may not match the movements very much and that is just fine. Just breathe naturally. And the more that you practice it, it becomes second nature and it really does become a powerful way to get movement in the body, to feel your breath, to be in the present moment and to also feel your vital energy force just flowing through your whole body. So let's get on the mat and I will show you the elements of that sun salutation and then we'll put it all together and see how it goes. The first part of sun salutation is standing in mountain pose. So sometimes you learn it with your feet together, but if you broaden the feet to about hip distance apart, you have a broader foundation. One isn't right or wrong. You can explore and see. So I'm putting my feet at hip distance with my heels underneath the sits bones, which are at the bottom of your hip bones, the bottom of your pelvis. And you want to feel the foundation of your feet. So the foundation of this pose, the grounding of this pose is mountain is your feet. So I want you to feel the ground underneath your feet. And we talk about certain points in the yoga room um, to focus your attention. So you can focus your attention on the very root of your big toe, big toes, the big toe mounds, and then the roots of the pinky toes. And then there are toe pads in between that too. If you lift all 10 of your toes, if you're able to lift the toes, that can be hard if you haven't done much yoga before, but keep practicing and you'll develop that neural connection. When you lift all of your toes, you can start to feel the toe mounds a little more. If that still isn't working for you, if you lift one heel up and just press into the toe mounds, like the fatty part at the base of your toes, those are your toe mounds. And then the heel, just right in the center of the heel, you wanna bring your awareness and, and some grounding. So it can be called the tripod of the foot. Imagine you've got two tripods underneath you and they're really supporting you. So as you ground into those, those spots on your foot, you might feel a little lifting in the arch of your foot. And we do want to try to find that. It's hard in some feet to feel it, but try your best. If you press down and out with your feet, you feel an engagement in the legs, especially kind of the outer legs and hips. You can even gently draw the kneecaps up the thighs a little bit with your muscular engagement to get even stronger. But if you are a hyperextending person, don't lock out your knees. You might not be able to do the lifting of the kneecaps. So the point basically with all of those details, the point is to get the grounding from kind of your waist or belly button navel area down, kind of pushing down and supporting you. And then go to the opposite, right at the crown of the head, the center of the crown. If you imagine there is a string that lifts the crown of the head, closer to the ceiling, keep your chin level. If you get those two things, you get a lot of the benefits of mountain pose. We can keep adding on to mountain pose. So relax the shoulders away from the ears. You don't have to pull anything, just relax them. And then you can have very gentle engagement of the shoulder blades in the back body, drawing towards the spine a little bit. And then there is a base of your shoulder blades that may or may not make sense to you, but the bottom of the shoulder blades, 
If you imagine you tuck those into your back pockets, then that can draw the shoulder blades onto the back ribs. And if some of these cues, they may be too subtle or confusing for you, take the ones that work. Palms can face into the body, but when you brought your shoulder blades towards the spine and then tuck them into your back pocket, you may have found that the arms start to rotate forward a little more. Maybe the palms even face forward. So very strong pose. As you flow through the sun salutation, you don't spend all this time in each mountain pose, but when you're first learning it, knowing the intention, the strength of this pose is very important. It's also a wonderful pose you can just practice outside of, uh, of the yoga room. So really strong mountain pose is where we begin. It's called Tadasana. And then we bring the hands into a place called Anjali Mudra, where the palms of the hands come together and the thumbs rest on your sternum, the energetic heart. And the next part is extended mountain. And depending on your shoulders, you can lift the arms overhead or you could come to W arms. I'm not going to do that version. I just want you to know anytime you can have your arms come to the W with your elbows bent, shoulders squeezing gently together, okay? So the other two options for arms overhead are arms out to the side and up or straight forward and up. And I'll demo different um, ways to get there as we go through different flows. I'm not gonna worry about the breath right now. So we'll just begin releasing the arms out to the side, palms up and all the way overhead, or you could come to W arms or you could have lifted the arms straight up. This is extended mountain pose. So the low ribs are gently softening down, knitting in, fingertips are reaching up, palms of the hands are facing each other. And then to get down, we're going to go halfway with the chair pose. Bend the knees, shift your hips back. You don't have to bend the knees too much. And then at the same time, the arms will come down to your side. They can stay right by your side or they can reach back. And then we'll reach the arms forward again. Each of these will be a breath. Maybe even lift the chest. Keep the knees and the hips where they are as you come forward, keeping the spine long, long, long. And your hands can touch blocks or books or pillows or your body. The head can drop down. The knees can stay soft or you can straighten the legs for a moment. Okay, and then from here, we're going to step one foot back. So bend the knees and step your right foot way back and you'll be in a high lunge. And then put that right knee down onto the ground. We're gonna lift the arms up. You can take a stop on your thighs if that would help you or lift both arms up and overhead. Same thing, palms are facing in. You can reach the pinky side of the fingers really up towards the ceiling. This is the low lunge or the upward lunge. Hands will come back down and you can be onto fingertips. If you had blocks, you could have your hands on blocks and we'll step the front foot, your left foot back. And now you'll be in what's called the table pose. I'm just gonna turn so you can see me. So in the table pose, if you watched the other video, I showed you how to do cat cow. Fan out the fingers, ground through the L of the fingers, point your toes straight back or curl them under, knees or hip distance and then tuck your tailbone, drop your head and feel a rounded spine. That's the cat, a nice rounding of the spine. And then come into cow, release the tailbone up without leaning forward, draw the heart forward, keep slight engagement in the low belly. And then here, we're kind of halfway into the salute. A nice pose is the puppy dog. So if you step your hands forward and then at these hip creases, shift the hips back, Get deeper in the hip creases and put your head down. It might rest on the floor, it might rest on a block or a pillow. So the arms are straight, the elbows are lifted. This is a place where we would hold for several breaths. If you don't like how this feels in your back, you can keep shifting your knees, your, excuse me, your sits bones back towards your heels for the extended child's pose. So we'll all come back up to table. And in the sun salute, if you step one foot back, you usually step that same foot forward. It doesn't really matter, but that's how traditionally it's been done um, in the yoga room. So we step the right foot back and getting the right foot forward takes a little bit of practice. You might step it straight forward. You might step it out to the side and forward. You might release your hands and then step it forward. 
So this is something to practice, okay, with the video. So step your right foot forward and we're back in this shape of the lunge. And then we'll lift the arms up and overhead with your front heel underneath the front knee, that's part of the lunge. And then your hands come down. We need to get to the front of the mat, tuck your back toes under, lift the back knee, keep the front knee bent and just slide that back foot forward, keep both knees bent. We'll come into that chair pose where we started, arms overhead, and then arms come to your side, and then we'll stand up into extended mountain, hands back in front of your heart. And this is where we begin, okay? So feel free to just watch through this a couple of times so you can see it and then start to practice with me. So we're gonna do the left side and now I'll add in some breath. We'll take the mountain pose, strong feet pushing down and out, lifting through the crown, relax your shoulders. Shoulder blades can gently draw towards midline, tuck into the back pockets. Slight engagement in the low belly. You don't have to overdo that, just a little bit of a lift there. And then hands at Anjali Mudra at your heart space. Inhale, arms lift overhead. Exhale, bend the knees, shift the hips back. Arms come to your side and back. I'll turn around. Inhale, lifts the arm and chest. Stay in chair. Exhale, fold you into a forward bend. Inhale, steps the left foot back. Exhale, drops the left knee down. Inhale, lifts both arms. Exhale, hands come down. Inhale, steps the front foot back. Come into table pose. Exhale, into cat pose. Ground through the L, round the spine, tuck the tailbone. Inhale, release the tailbone. Cow pose, reach the heart forward. And then exhale into this puppy dog shape. So you could do a downward dog if you watch that video of how to do the down dog. Instead of puppy dog, you could do the down dog where you tuck your, to your toes underneath you, curl them under you, and then push your hips back and lift them up. Keep your head in between your upper arms, draw your elbow creases towards each other like you're hugging a big beach ball. Keep lifting the hips and pushing them back. Get a good stretch through the both side waists. The heels might be pretty high up, the heels might start to release, the knees can be bent, the feet can be really wide, or you can be down in your puppy dog. So take a look at that video to get more instruction. Come on down, everybody come down to your tabletop. We need to get to the lunge. So step your left foot forward, take an inhale and reach both arms up. Breathe out, hands down. Breathe in, lift the back knee. Breathe out, slide the back foot forward. Breathe in, lift the arms and chest with knees bent. Breathe out, arms down and back. Breathe in, lift up into extended mountain. Breathe out, hands in front of your heart. Okay, so let's do each side one more time with the breath. And we're just gonna flow from one to the other, starting to feel your heart rate, starting to feel your blood, starting to just feel that, that really good energy. We begin in mountain pose, hands at your heart. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, bend the knees, arms back. Inhale, arms lift, chest lifts. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, steps the right foot back. Exhale, knee down. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, table. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, puppy dog or down dog. We'll hold for a couple breaths. So if you're in the down dog and you just want it to be one or two breaths, that's fine. Then drop the knees and come into puppy dog or extended child's. You can go back and forth. So if you're up in that downward facing dog, you stay grounded in the L of your fingers. You keep reaching the hips back and up. So grounded through the hands, lifted in the hips. And then let's come back down to table pose. We're on the right side. Step the right foot forward. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, hands down. 
Inhale, lift the back leg. Exhale, slide the back foot forward. Inhale into chair. Exhale, arms release. Inhale one more time. Lift up extended mountain. Exhale, hands in front of your heart. Inhale, arms up. Exhale into chair. Inhale, arms and chest lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, step the left foot back. Exhale, knee down. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale into table. Exhale into cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, downward dog. Extend to child's or puppy dog. Catch your breath. Come back to table. Step the left foot forward on an exhale. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, high lunge, lift the back knee. Breathe out, slide the back foot forward. Breathe in, chair pose. Breathe out, arms down. One more breath in, lift to extended mountain. Exhale, hands in front of your heart. Okay, so just take a moment. And feel. Feel how you, your energy inside the body might feel or your heartbeat or any joints, muscles. So that's an introduction to the sun salutation, Surya Namaskar, um, that w took us up and down, back and forward on our mat. Uh, we did some lunges and just did a lot of really good things for your body. So I will be posting some more variations of the sun salutation. So take a look at that. If you're enjoying these videos, the Yoga 101, the basics, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would love that. And I really appreciate you watching. Namaste, everybody. Well wishes to you all.